All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at example number two for method of superposition. Uh, and in this case, we've got a cantilever beam with two different loads on it. We've got this distributed load at 10 kilonewtons per meter, and we've got this point load acting on the end of 20 kilonewtons. So you guys know from the last video that when we're talking at least in terms of displacement or deflection, really, um, that the deflection of this beam that's subjected to both loads is equal to the sum of the deflection caused by just the distributed load and the deflection caused just by the point load at any given point. So for example, like the end here, the deflection at point B uh, for the actual system is going to be the deflection at point B under this distributed load plus the deflection at point B uh, just when it's subjected to just the same point load. Um, now the same goes for the slope. So the end slope at B, uh, the actual slope is going to be the sum of the slope at B due to the distributed load and the slope of B due to just the point load. Now we're going to use a table to solve this problem and I got one here on the website for us to use so you can get the URL right here or if you're on YouTube I'll put this link in the description or I'll also put a little bubble thing up here you can click on it and uh, you can come to this page if you want to see that. Um, but if we come down here to the section with the cantilever beams basically we're looking at uh, actually let's just go up here for a second so we're looking at slope at B and the elastic curve equation so we are looking at a cantilever beam with a distributed load the whole way across and also a cantilever beam with an individual point load. So if we go and bring these into our problem just like this, then we can just fill out our slope equations and then fill out our elastic curve equations using the values that we already have. And then we'll just sum those together and we'll be able to find the slope and displacement or deflection at B. So let's do slope first and let's label uh, let's call this system one, let's call this system two, and then the original system, let's just call that like system zero. So for the slope at B in system one, we can simplify it to this, and then what we want to do is we just want to check the units here. So newtons are going to cancel with newtons. This meters is going to cancel with one of these, so that'll bring down to two, and then meters squared is going to cancel meters squared. And this is going to be left in units of radians. So if you just plug in this uh, this last computation into your calculator, computation, uh, if you plug in this last thing into your calculator, you're going to get negative 0 0.000133 radians. And this negative sign here indicates that the angle is basically uh, opening down like that uh, going clockwise off the axis and uh, you can find that in our table here where we talk about our positive uh, conventions here where uh, if we got a positive value for theta here it would be going up counterclockwise off the axis because ours is opposite to that it uh, we got a negative value so it's going to be opposite to that it's going to be coming down uh, that makes sense because the distributed load is going to be pushing us down. So let's talk about system two now. It's going to reduce to this and when we cancel out our units, again, we'll just check we have newtons canceling with newtons and then meter squared canceling with meter squared. And so we're going to be ending up with units in radians again. We're pushing down here. We're expecting this to go down, forming that angle like we expect. So this is going to be, we can just draw a little diagram there for our reference that it's going to be coming down clockwise off the, uh, the axis. And then for our original system here, when we want to figure out what the actual displacement is, it's just the sum of those two. So we can call it theta L, you can call it theta B, whatever really subscript you want to use there, as long as it makes sense. Uh, so this is going to be equal to negative 0.000533 radians. And that is our first answer for the actual, def uh, the actual slope at point B. So now let's move on and uh, let's do the deflection at B. So we basically just plug and chug into the elastic curve equation. And let's just check to make sure the units check out. So newtons cancel newtons, meter squared, that reduces that to a two. And then this meter reduces that one more. So this is left in units of meters. And if we do that last calculation there, we get negative 0. 0, 0, 0, 0.0002 meters, which is equal to um, 0 0.2 millimeters, and this negative again, uh, that is coming from that ch from the table there, where if this says if this is positive, we should expect that this is a, a deflection in the upward direction. So this just means that this is equal to 0 0.2 millimeters in the downward direction, and again, uh, looking at yeah system one. Yeah, we're expecting that downward deflection again, so that totally makes sense. All right, now we do the same thing for 
uh, for system two here, grabbing its equation for the elastic curve. And when we check our units, so we get newtons canceling newtons and meters squared, reducing that to a single unit of meters. And uh, so yeah, we got meters there. That's what we're looking for for displacement. And when we uh, do that last calculation, we get negative 0 0.000533 meters, which is equal to negative 0 0.533 millimeters or also again if we're thinking graphically or directionally whatever as uh, 0 0.533 millimeters in the downward direction all right so what we want to do is we just want to sum those up because we, just like we did here for uh, for the angles um, we're gonna have uh, YB and the actual YB of the the doubly loaded structure with both loads on it is going to be equal to uh, YB1 plus Y B2. And so that is just going to be equal to, uh, where was it, uh, z negative 0 0.2 millimeters. We can even write that negative 0 0.2 millimeters minus negative 0 0.533. No, sorry, plus negative. It's a, yeah, plus negative millimeters. Uh, and that's going to give us a total deflection of negative 0 0.733 millimeters or again that's uh, 0 0.733 millimeters in the downward direction sweet all right green box time boom let's throw a green box over that uh, and and, and uh, we'll link that up and there we go that is the uh, that's the answer that's uh, the total deflection at point B and the total slope at point B and we did that using the method of superposition which you can see here graphically or if you want to get all technical, then you can look at the math here and confirm it that way.